Hello people, it's Elster Nation here again, and we're going into part 3, and this will be the final part of Painting the Night Haunter. So what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to slow things down a bit. Part 2 is a little bit hectic, um, mainly because I was nervous, I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing. Um, so we're going to slow it down a bit. Now you can see here, I've assembled the model. Um, there's a few little bits I haven't put together yet, but I basically put them together as best we can. And then we're going to move on so you can see what it looks like at the current state. Uh, we're just going to enhance things in this bit and we're going to work on the base as well. Okay, so first off is I'm just going to make that little thing on his chest a little bit redder. Uh, just using uh, GW's Blood Red. Still not entirely sure what it is. Okay, so now I'm going back. Uh, I wanted to uh, enrich the cape a little bit, uh, make the red bits on it actually stand out and give him a bit of a uh, a colour change between the skin bits because they were blending quite a lot. So I wanted to make it seem as if there was actual sort of cloak underneath all the skin. Uh, just basically using watered down blood red from GW uh, just to get more vibrant tones to it. Um, you can see there I've actually had to go over all the sort of writing and engraving bit um, because otherwise it wouldn't really balance properly. Um, all I can suggest is when you're doing it is don't make that mistake. Um, highlight all the way up and then do the writing over the top because you'll see it in a bit um, causes me a few issues. What I also decided is that top bit I thought would actually be a ragged, sort of torn piece of cape, uh, not actual skin, so I decided to paint that red as well. Okay, so now... Uh, I'm actually going to highlight up the cape itself, so I'm using more down, I'm trying to be a little bit more uh, careful with this point, uh, try and stick to the lines and the raised edges, uh, basically want to just try and highlight this up, I don't want it too bright, I don't believe the night one, I should have a really bright cloak, but um, yeah, it does need a little bit of highlighting. As I said, remember to water down your paints, um, just make them thin, it's it's much easier to correct if you just put a thin layer down rather than just basically putting one thick layer down and ha having to deal with the aftermath of it. Okay, and again, highlighting up that little red thing on his chest. Again, not entirely sure what it is. So now I'm going to try and highlight up the skulls. Uh, the skulls themselves had a lot of brown bits on them, uh, I didn't really like it. So I'm going over it with uh, Ushapti Bone, or slash Bleach Bone. Um, very light, just to sort of give it a very gradual texture change uh, rather than just being start brown to white um, 
but yeah, just trying to highlight up a bit more, make all the bones actually stand back, stand out a little bit, rather than just be sort of blend into the rest of the flesh that's there. It's worthwhile if you're ever painting skulls, actually look at um, real skulls and their anatomy and where light hits and where it doesn't hit and which bits are dark and which bits aren't. Um, because that'll actually help you quite a lot when painting them. Okay, likewise, we'll do the same on the skull on the loincloth. Also, as well, highlighting up the uh, skeleton and skulls on the shoulder pad. With the shoulder side of things and the skeletons, um, I'm being a little bit careful because I still want them to look kind of gory. So I don't want them like clean white, I want them to look a little bit more, but we'll revisit those in a moment. Okay, now I'm just highlighting up even a little bit more um, using Screaming Skull, which is a sort of lighter version of um, Bleach Bone. Um, and basically all you do is just add in little bits of white uh, to go up to the next stages. Again, keep your paints thin um, and it makes the change between colours a lot more smoother rather than being stark contrast. So all I'm doing here is uh, I'm actually mucking up because uh, what I tried to achieve was dry brushing on uh, the Screaming Skull over the letters just to pick them out again. However, you can see there that my brush wasn't exactly that dry, so I made a bit of a mistake there. Um, and then what I did afterwards is dry brush over with some yellow. Um, but this this before that bit, we're actually just touching up with a bit of white, but that's just to get some raised edges out of it. Um, there's a way I've kind of corrected it. I've also found some faces on I didn't realise there were faces on some of those. So, um, yeah, it was interesting finding them. Now's the yellow bit. So, trying to make it yellow again. Uh, but as you can see, it looks a bit messy now, so, um... The way I got around that was using very, very thin down red um, and just washing it over that bit so it seeped into all the sort of cracks and crevices. Um, and I just did that a couple of times and it didn't have too much of a bad impact on the writing, um, uh, but it did fill in all the gaps and make them red again. So uh, if you do want to get around that, again, use really watered down red and just wash it over as you can see I'm doing here. I'm just trying to wipe off the uh, paint off the raised areas. OK, 
Okay, so now is a bit where I get to play a little bit. Um, basically what I'm using is both for the Blood God, uh, a GW technical paint. Um, what I've done though is I've thinned it down. Uh, I, it, it was a bit too thick and sticky. So I've, I've thinned it down and I'm basically just applying it to random places where I want to, um, where I think there'll be blood basically. Luckily, when you thin this down, it doesn't end up with that really powerful shine. Um, it just basically dries red, which is quite nice. If you want a different effect, though, if you want complete gore, then yeah, don't water it down as much. I'm just trying to put like random little dots and stuff like like blood flecks and stuff like that because I don't. It wouldn't be clean, would it? It's a it's a gore cloak, so there's going to be a little flex of blood all over the place. Okay, now this bit again, uh, kind of playing, um, so I'm putting Blood for the Blood God on the Scything Talons. Uh, not Scything Talons, the Lightning Claw, sorry, I'm thinking of Tyranids. Um, uh, this was kind of a bit more complex than I thought. I thought I could just slap it on there and be done with it, but then I started thinking a lot about it and um, wasn't entirely sure, like, would it have a lot, would it not have a lot? Um, what what's the sort of theory, what's the process behind it, um, so I've kind of just done it and thinking the blood would run off sort of more towards the bottom, um, but I've done it on his right hand, I've done a lot more gore on it. Also as well, I applied some to the shoulder pad side of things, so you know, I said I was going to revisit it, so this is the first stage of revisiting, just applying a layer of this blood effect over it, and then uh, we'll go back and have a look at it even more. And also highlighting up that little thing on his chest, whatever it is. Again, to be fair, there's no real exact science to this, so just have some fun with this bit. What I'm also doing is combining um, Blood for the Blood God with Red Ink as well. Because um, it's a slightly different tone and it's also a dry shiny, basically, so you'll get that blood effect on it. Um, it's quite nice mixing to the two because Blood for the Blood God's quite dark and Red Ink's just quite vibrant, basically, so mixing the two you get this really nice kind of bloody effect. So what we're going to do is move on to the base. Now this bit's quite... It, it daunted me what I was going to do here and then I got to it and it actually turned out quite easy. Um, what we're doing is basically just base coating it with an airbrush um, and we're using Astronomican Grey. It's one of the old foundation paints from GW. Um, I'm trying to leave a certain amount of shading on it so not completely cover the thing. But um, you do want a good base coat down. Ok, 
Okay, now I've got to mix some white into the astronomical grey, and I'm just going to do some highlighting. So just give a little bit more depth on, rather than just being plain flat colour, and we'll get some shadows and stuff going on in there. Okay, the next bit is I've thinned down uh, Vallejo light brown and I'm just kind of washing it with an airbrush. I'm just blasting it all over it. Um, as I said, I thinned it down so I don't want it to obscure the colours and the sort of depths that are already there. I just want to slightly tint the entire thing a different colour. I'd probably suggest as well doing a couple of coats. And also as well, I probably wouldn't advise doing what I'm doing here, is trying to spray the base of the feet. Um, it's very prone to accidents and stuff like that. What I ended up doing is just painting on uh, afterwards using the same techniques as the airbrushing. So again, yeah, going around with another layer just to uh, enhance it a little bit more with that light brown colour. Okay, now this bit, um, I'm actually using Scale 75's non-metallic gold set. Um, so the first mix is a mix of gobby brown and Sahara yellow. Um, and it just uses as a sort of base coat. We kind of want these to be uh, gold. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they're gold, but we, yeah, we're doing gold. That's kind of what's on the artwork, so and what's been painted before. So I'm just going to copy them. Okay, so the next layer is just going to be Sahara Yellow. So, um, and this is kind of just basically going over it again, um, but not completely. So it's not a base coat, but it's the next layer up. Also as well, there's a part which goes on the side of this ceiling base. Um, which locks in the actual base to it. Um, the same techniques have just been done on that as well. Okay, so what we're doing then is mixing in 10 ear yellow into the mix. And again, going up with another highlighting layer. And then using uh, scale signifiers again, white sands. And again, also adding that into the mix and just going up, making it thinner and thinner and thinner until we've kind of got this non-metallic gold line going on so it's quite easy to do just remember to keep your paints thin um, and yeah just have fun with it just try not to go overboard just a little bit of finesse hard edge highlighting comes in real handy here Okay, now I wanted just a little bit more of a, a change in tone, so I've watered down some Agrax Earthshade. And at first I just wanted to paint it in all the sort of cracks and crevices, uh, just to give them a different colour. Uh, but what you'll see me do is actually give up on that plan entirely, and then just start painting everything with it. So, um, yeah, water down Agrax Earthshade. The intention is that it's all going to pull on the cracks um, and just give them a little bit more definition. You see me uh, 
feverishly attempting to try and rub off the paint. Um, we'll find out in a second that I just don't care anymore. And there it is, he's lost his patience. And away we go. You can get some quite nice tones with this as well. Letting the paint pull in certain areas is quite nice. Don't let it pull too much, otherwise it, you can just get puddle effects everywhere. But yeah, you can get some quite nice tones out of it if you just allow it to settle in certain areas. Okay, so this is what it looks like when uh, it was, well, it's still drying in certain areas, but this is what it looks like when it's assembled. Okay, so now I'm moving on to this guy's head. Um, I'm not going to put as much detail on this one because I'm going to cover him in gore anyway. So um, basically we're just starting off with Talon Flesh. And... Uh, yeah, pay him up. Also, with this dead dude that's been half skinned, I find this dude quite funny. It looks like someone's ripped off half his scalp and then stapled it to his own forehead. <laughs> it's quite amusing. Uh, but yeah, again, just covering it in talent flesh. Um, I wasn't entirely sure what was what with this guy at first. Um, uh, there was because there was so much anatomy sort of missing and skin was gone. Um, I wasn't a hundred percent sure what was skin and what was not skin and what had been ripped off um, so I missed one of the the left chest pectoral muscle black at first and I realised my mistake in trying to go over it again afterwards So uh, now applying the same effect as I did with the face, so mixing in uh, purple into it. Uh, this guy's still wet, so that actually made things quite interesting. Um, also mixed in with some seraphim sepia with that as well, so to give it a bit more of a tanned look. Uh, this is just mixing in, again, some red, uh, while it's still wet, so this is kind of like wet blending, basically. Um, you can't really get this bit wrong, um, the guy's must, like, mucked up enough as it is anyway, so, uh, if you put too much red in, that's not really a big deal, uh, as I said, just thin down your paint, um, and everything will be very forgiving to you. And if it goes onto the model too thick, just wipe some water onto it afterwards, or once it's on there, and that'll thin it down. So again, with all of these guys, I'm kind of giving them a red wash now. They're going to be gory anyway, so... Now 
Okay, so now I'm painting the uh, sort of torsos of these guys um, and their lower halves as well. What I thought at first was to um, do them all grey uh, or like try and be specific to where it was grey and where it was metal. Uh, I then gave up and decided to paint them all grey. Um, and I used a thin down one so the black still sort of shows through so it becomes a very dark grey. Um, and what I'll do in a moment is basically just dry brush on some metal over the top. It is cheating. Um, there's not as much detail. You can go into more detail, but this isn't the focal point of the miniature. This is kind of like the scenic base side of things. These guys are messed up. They're gory, so I don't really see the point in putting a hell of a lot of detail into them. So this is where I start dry brushing on, starting off with bulk gun metal, and basically yeah, just dry brushing on. Have a look at the pictures for reference, and you can see what's metal and what's not. It's mainly just plates of armor over them, so you're talking like shins, knees, uh, upper thighs, um, stomach, chest, shoulders, uh, I think even the waist. Uh, it looks like it's got a power fist there as well, so that all got dry brush, bolt gun metal. Since it's dark anyway, all you're doing is kind of accentuating and picking it all out. Um, and we'll do a couple other layers of different metallics over the top to uh, just enhance it a little bit more. Okay, so now we come in with the next layer, and this is chainmail colour. So this is just enhancing it a little bit more. You can see it just all start to pop out a bit now, which is good. Um, and then afterwards you just do another one of silver. So it's quite an easy technique. Yes, it is possibly cheating, but at the end of the day, if you want your mini to look good, and you can get it to look good, I was there cheating. Unless you're paying for someone else to get it painted for you, and then, yeah, that kind of is cheap. As long as you're not entering in a competition, you'll be fine, you can do that. But if you're into competition, no paying other people to do the work. And this is the last layer, as you can see, it really starts to sort of stand out now. With each successive layer as well, you want to go just a little bit thinner on top. You don't want to go as heavy as you do with the like, layer before. So each time you go up a layer, just not as much. And there we go. And I did the same with the other guy as well. Now this bit is, I'm using Gene Steeler Purple um, and I'm washing it in on top of this red. Now I've been adding little thin layers of red and serif and sepia on top of it as well. Um, so I'm trying to add the purple whilst it's still wet so I get a blend effect. Um, if you're pulling it, if you're putting as much on as I had, it's quite easy to keep it wet for a while. So you can go off and do other bits while it's waiting to dry and then come back to it while it's still wet. And you can still muck around with it. So 
So it's, it's a bit more like a wash, really, to be fair. It just adds another layer of colour on top of it. Again, don't forget the stamp on the forehead. Okay, so this is a random little thing. This thing attaches to a shoulder. I completely forgot about it, and I'm painting it silver now. We'll come back and revisit it in a little bit, but um, yeah, well, I found it, and I was like, ooh, I need to get that attached. I think it's one of his throwing knives. So, um, yeah, I painted that bit silver. We'll come back to it in a moment. Okay, so I've attached the guy to the base now. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm now just dry brushing bleach bone because I wanted his ribs to show out. Um, and I didn't quite get the effect I wanted. It, w it wasn't standing out as much, but it was highlighting stuff. So I thought, well, let's go over the rest of it and see what happens. And it actually turned out really nicely. You start picking out all the details, um, just enhancing them a bit. Uh, it makes it look like um, an anatomy drawing, basically, where it's sort of pinky white sort of colour, which I, I really liked. So. Um, yeah, if you, if you want to enhance it a bit, just do a quick little dry brush with bleach bone and it picks everything out quite a lot. so much I did it with this guy's face as well. It doesn't matter if you go over other colours and stuff like that, um, you're going to be making this really gory in a second as well. Which is now! So again, blood for the blood god, and just go nuts at this point. Um, I like to try and think of where it would be splattering and where it would be going and so forth. You can go absolutely bananas if you want. Um, you could end up getting too much though. Um, it could end up causing problems if you go too crazy with it. Um, but the, you don't really have to be that precise with this bit. You can have quite a bit of fun just going blah 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 blah. You can't really get it wrong. So as you can see, um, it doesn't really matter that we've got it's made it all white. Uh, the blood for the blood god's just bringing it all back to being really quite gory again, um, which is quite a lot of fun. To when when it starts happening, it's really quite satisfying to see it come to life a lot more. I wasn't entirely sure whether or not to do his like chest bit, which isn't torn open to be bloody or not. But I thought, well, to be fair, if you're that messed up. There's probably going to be blood everywhere. So I also did it dribbling down the side of the rock. Um, this is kind of interesting actually, because it makes you think about where blood would go, where it would come from, how much. Like, if it hits a bit, a certain piece of terrain or something, will it shift and go another direction? Will it follow down? Will it trough um, and pull somewhere? It's generally quite interesting. Again, if you thin it down, it's very forgiving as well. So, and again, just playing a little bit more. I thought we needed a bit more blood. He's, he's, he's in a pretty bad way. So, um, yeah, needs a bit more blood around. Okay, so back to this thing. Uh, so what I'm doing first off is giving it a wash of blue and black. So that's Nulm Oil and uh, Draconaut Off. 
nightshade. You know, it's the blue GW wash thing. So just wash that and then leave it to let it dry. My persistence was I was going to get it to change colour straight away, but it's not a good idea. So, uh, once you've done it, I came back again and I didn't water it down as much. I wanted to get a bit more definition. So I tried to um, aim the wash area more towards the top. Um, and also the bottom side of the blade. If that makes any sense. Hopefully I'll show you in a second. Yeah, there it is. Bottom side of the blade. That's it. That's what I was talking about. Okay. I'll put it on the model and it still seemed pretty bright. So I decided to wash that bit up there. And do a little bit more up top. And this is a bit thicker. It's not so watered down. Um, that's quite a lot though, so I have to go away and get it out again. Oh, also, bottom side bit, you know, what I was talking about. Okay, so basically all I did was just wash the brush, dry it off, and then poke it in and it soaked up all the water. So, this was one last little thing I wanted to do on it. Um... A little bit tricky, kind of. It's kind of like freehand work, um, and there's kind of a pun there somewhere. Um, I wanted to do the red hand on his knee pad. Um, if you know Night Lord's backstory, um, guys that owed the Night Lord or done something bad get red gauntlets. Um, so I wanted to do that. Now, to understand the picture or understand what I had to draw. Um, basically, I used the Lord of the Rings White Hand of Saruman um, as a kind of reference, but just made it red instead of white. Um, this bit, you do need to keep your brush wet. Um, as you can see many times here, it dries out rather rapidly when I'm doing this. So you'll have to constantly keep on washing it, get more paint and applying it. The key I find with doing sort of freehand work is blocking it out first, so getting the kind of shapes where you want them, um, and then filling them in afterwards. A bit like what I'm doing, I'm starting to fill it in a bit. And there's some bits which I do a bit too much. Um, next bit I believe is where I've done wait I do too much I have to clean it up yeah that bit so I realized that quite rapidly actually so I've got some water I managed to sort of clean it off so this little bit is me actually desperately trying to clean that up there we go quick recovery So yeah, just blocking it out, and there we have it, there it is. So, that's how I painted the Night Haunter. I hope you all enjoyed it, um, sorry it's been a long one, um, hopefully it's inspired you to do some bits and bobs, you can probably do better yourself, so it's just the way I did it. So, I hope you all liked it, uh, if you want to see more, there's a showcase video on my channel, you'll see him spin it around for like three and a half minutes. So I'd like to thank you all for watching, stay tuned for more videos, we'll do more tutorials at some point soon hopefully. Hope this has given you some ideas, some inspiration, or maybe even shown you a thing or two. Thanks for watching guys, take it steady, and I'll catch you all soon.